not even gonna hold y'all I had a really really hard time paying attention to this episode I I can't explain why but this took a lot out of me What's good, y'all? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Love is Blind, Season 7, Episode 2. If you haven't already, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, leave a spoiler-free comment about Episodes 1 or 2 down below. All right, so let's get into it, y'all. Monica and Steven. So, his last relationship was two years ago, and they dated for two years. He said that was his most his most healthy, communicative relationship he had ever been in. He believes in talking about how you're feeling. So he said he's not one of those guys that if you say, you know, you're fine, no, you're not, what's good, he likes to probe. You know what I'm saying? Like he can pick up and feel that if your energy ain't energizing, the way that it should, like, he's going to want to press. He just believes that people should be very open and honest about their feelings, and I agree, right? Monica wants someone that is not expecting perfection because nobody is perfect. And he's like, bet, yeah, because he believes that you marry or that you like somebody for their qualities, but you love somebody for their flaws. And like, we've all heard different iterations of that quote, but I like this one. You, cause you're, let's be real. You're attracted to somebody because of their qualities. And we always hear that. I love you despite, I love you even though, you know what I mean? Like that is when you really know that you love somebody when you are willing to put up with their flaws. So I like that, Stephen. Now, Stephen get me a little later, but I like that, Stephen. So he then tells her that he technically holds the title of being a cheater. So he said, look, I didn't think that I was good enough for the woman that I was dating. I thought she was too good for me. So I slid in somebody's DMs. We were flirting with intention so it was basically emotional cheating which yes is cheating it was emotional cheating and he got caught and I guess they broke up because of that that part wasn't as clear to me and then he tells Monica he wants to take her out on a date later that night meanwhile back in the women's lounge Hannah is still regretting not picking Nick. So she was like, Nick was telling me about how, you know, I'm such a good catch and I'm such a good woman. And like one day somebody is going to love me and he's wishing me all the best. And now she's like, I just feel like he made me feel so awesome and special. And I, she's wondering if she moved on too fast. She was like, Nick is probably gone home now. And now I feel bad. So then the other ladies were like, Nick has probably gone home and you know he's like pulling us all up on Instagram. So Hannah is like, but I, I, I requested a date with Nick. I told y'all Hannah was going to get on my nerves. <laughs> I told y'all Hannah was going to get on my nerves. Because here's the thing, why did you break up with him last episode? What was the point? Because everybody else told you to? Girl, the peer pressure of it all. We then see Brittany and Leo. So, money bags Lee and then go digger Brittany. So, she tells Leo that everyone has now learned who everybody else is dating. And Leo was like, I mean, that was going to happen. That's kind of standard. Brittany is like, well, I said your name on accident. I didn't mean to. Um, I personally do not believe her. I think she definitely said his name on purpose. I think it was definitely intentional because she wanted to see which ladies reacted and who made a face because that way she can size up her competition. She then, because this next statement is her saying that, you know, because that was an accident because I'm really into the evil eye and, you know, the jealousy of it all and... <laughs> Excuse me, the jealousy of it all. And I said, girl, what you why you think Hannah's jealous of you? Because Hannah is a big body Benz and you're a fiat? 
Like, I didn't I didn't like that because I know that that was some shade towards Hannah. And even though I don't fool with Hannah like that, why would Hannah be jealous of you, Brittany? Come forward and tell the class. Come forward and tell the class. I didn't like that. I thought that was real. Okay. So... Leo lets her know that he has a crush on her, okay? I have a crush on you, Brittany. Her response was, I'm in such a sad mood, be and I probably should have went home. I said, D -d did I miss something? I rewinded it two or three times. This man is telling you he likes you. He has a crush on you. And your response is you should have went home. You in a sad mood. What are you in a mood about? What happened? Y'all, let me know if I missed something. So his response to, to that is that while he's not ready to say the L word, he wants her to know that he is falling for her. And I'm like, I'm going crazy because I, I definitely missed something. Her, um, he then tells her that he will never forget this date and he wants her to be able to cry in front of him. Her response is, what if I ghost you? Her response is, what if I ghost you? This conversation was so all over the place. I don't know if it's the editing or if this is just the, the natural cadence of their um, conversation. But this is chaotic AF. Brittany said that she's a very intuitive person and she knows that he would never just have one girl that he's talking to in there. Miss Miss Mamas, you don't have to be intuitive to know that. You have to have common sense. But I I guess. Leo then said that because of her voice, because of Brittany's voice, that people probably think she's dumb. I said, not you saying she sound ditzy. <laughs> This is why this episode had me kind of like, what? So he then tells her that before their date, she was his number two. But now, because of this date, she is now gone from number two to tie with number one. I said, what a jump. <laughs> it's the equivalent of jumping off the bottom stair and being, being happy and being proud of yourself. She wants to be his number one and his number one only. He asks if she can see herself married to him. She says, yes. He said, oh, I can see myself married to you as well. I, this was a weird conversation, y'all. Let me know if y'all were just as confused as I was with this entire conversation. This was weird to me. We then get Hannah and Nick. So she tells him that she thinks that she made the wrong decision. The way I would have paid Hannah Dust, because quit playing with me. <laughs> quit playing with me. So Nick, um, she, Hannah admits that she hurt him because she didn't want to get hurt. And everybody was telling her to end it with him. And he was like, wait, what? People told you to break up with me and you did it? And she was like, yeah. That's a red flag. That's a red flag, Hannah. I don't know if you knew, but that's a red flag for yourself. So Nick is like politicking and it's like, look, you know, give me a chance and I really like you and I'm all into you. And I just kind of feel like, where is the shame? Tuck your shame in. Ugh. Tuck your shame in a little bit. Like, if you got to beg somebody to want to give you another chance, a stranger at that, it's not worth it, Nick. It's not worth it. So he's asking her, baby, baby, please, baby, baby, please, baby, give me one more chance. And she's, she's going to do it because, hell, she ain't got nothing else to do. She quit her job to be here. She got to leave with something. We then see Hannah and Leo. He tells her he has a strong connection with the both of them. I said, Leo, now you just told Brittany that you would want to marry. All right. Garrett and Taylor, let's move on to some people that we actually like, okay? Garrett and Taylor. So, she is giving, she gives him an avocado plant, said that in five to seven years, um, it'll begin to, to bear fruit. He gives her some honey. She said, awesome, because she likes honey with her tea. Cool. 
Gary is like, let's let's get to the let's get to the root of this. Kids. Now, Garrett is like, look, you don't want kids for another, what, seven to ten years? She said, no, no. I said five to seven. She said, look, we don't have to compromise on that because I see a life with you. I see a future with you. I'm excited for a life with you. I'm excited for a future with you. And she feels that, like, thing, even though she loves the way her life is now, she is even more excited and knows that she will love her life with him. He then asked her to be his girlfriend. She said, you have two hours to convince me. He then tells her that people care about looks. So look, Garrett is being a a thousand percent real, right? As much as people like to say, I don't care about looks and I don't care about, you know, the physicality of it all, people do. Deep down, everybody does. You want to be physically attractive to the person that you're dating, to the person that you're married with, to the person you are going to spend the rest of your life with. He brings up the point that even, you know, now in today today's world, if you tell somebody that you met somebody or you, you met a guy, you met a girl, you are rocking with this person, you enjoy this person, the first thing your friend is going to say is pull up a picture. Do they have an Instagram? Because We are, we want to see how people look. We do. We want to see how people look. Anytime I've started talking to a new guy, the first thing that my friends say, send me his Instagram. That's, that's life, right? So while Garrett is not worried about how Taylor looks, I think Garrett is being a little bit more self-conscious about how he looks. And I think that because Garrett has only dated white women, I think that Garrett is a little nervous. I don't think that he's going to shun her because she's not white. Um, That's not the vibe he gives. But I think he's a little nervous because she made it seem like She's some random race, like a purple people eater or something. You know what I mean? She she made it awkward for him. She made it awkward for him. So we then get Bowden and Marissa. So Bowden thinks that he looks like a typical frat boy whose parents came for money and he didn't have to work for anything. And the position that he is in now, where he is now in life, has come from his parents having all these different connections. And I said, Bowden, who lied to you? You don't look like the typical frat boy at all. But okay. So they bond over fantasy books. They like to read what they say, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. And they talk about what is your party story. He tells some story about a camel. I don't know what was going on there. Tells some story about a camel, about how he thought he was going to die from the camel. But then he also tells um, a story about how he voluntarily went to Ukraine to help fight in the war. So we know that he is a Ukrainian immigrant that is over here. And when Ukraine was having their war, when they were having all that turmoil over there, he felt that he had to go. So he was saying how like his friends helped him get ready. His job told him, don't even quit. We're going to pay for, um, like his job paid for all his gear and all this other type of stuff. He gets very emotional about it. She gets emotional about it. Good for you, Bowden. Um, I'm sure the people of Ukraine, uh, thank you for your service. Very, very noble of you to do. We then get to Ramsey and Marissa. I like Ramsey. Now, I don't care for that hair, okay? I don't care for these two little these little two things right there, but I like his vibe. I like his energy. He seems very cool. So they're talking, and he tells her that she has been his top for a while. Now, Marissa is rocking with Bowden, too, so she can't reciprocate that energy just yet, but Ramsey's is cool as a fan. So he lets her know that he was previously married um, to his high school sweetheart. They were married for four years, just didn't work. They grew apart. He does not talk to her anymore. Now, I thought that was odd that he doesn't keep in contact with her because doesn't, um, doesn't Ramsey have kids? 
do, is that who I remember from the bio? Ramsey has kids, right? But he does not talk to his ex. So maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. He grew up very religious and has now moved away from that. On Marissa's side, her parents are divorced. Her, um, when her parents divorced when they were kids, her dad became a deadbeat dad and just said, F them kids. Nigga, okay? Whatever. And so her mom had to struggle with these four, you know, these four smart children that they had. And they were on welfare for a couple of years because things were very rough and things were tight. So she said that what really made her in life are the connections that she made with people that were more well off from her. So she talks about how like a volleyball coach took her to Disney. And even though that seems like a small thing, that is a huge thing to a child. That is, that's a huge thing for anybody out of the kindness of their heart to take you anywhere and pay for it. So she's big on like community and that type of stuff. Um, they start talking about gender, gender roles and Ramses is not a guy that subscribes to the traditional gender roles, man, go out, make all the money, woman sits at home, barefoot and pregnant. He doesn't subscribe to that. He said that he doesn't care about the societal norms or the societal standards when it comes to masculinity. He said, masculinity is what I make it. I said, get into it. Okay, okay, Ramses. Okay. So she then said that she does not care about physical looks. She cares more about the person and more about their character. She goes on to let us know that she has dated a conservative Trump supporter before, and she has also dated a very progressive liberal. What in their per, per like, I don't, okay. Okay. Um, he then asked her, what if he proposes? And she was like, wait, stop, hold it. Don't do that. Okay. She said she need a little bit more time. And I'm like, that's because you like Bowden. Okay. We will give you and Bowden a little more time. We then get back to the women's lounge and Garrett has sent a bouquet of sunflowers over there for Taylor. So remember, uh, Bowden X Taylor, what not Bowden, excuse me, Garrett X Taylor, what her favorite flower was. And she said sunflowers. And he said, coincidentally, that was his mother's favorite flower. He loves sunflowers as well. So he gives her this, you know, pretty little bouquet of flowers. And then there's a hand, there's like a little note, little poem. And then it ends with, will you be my girlfriend? Yes or no. Very cute. Very sweet. Good job, Gary. Tim and Alex. Y'all know we love them too. We love Tim and Alex. Okay. He had a music scholarship for college. So he talks about how he went to Norfolk University. And he went because he played, I think he said he played the horns. Now remember, Tim is the young man who both of his sisters have passed away. Um, he said he feels that his education experience he looks at with like spite. He said, because it reminds him of all the times that he felt dumb. So he didn't do the best when it came to like homework and stuff like that. But he said he would always test very, very well, which is true for a lot of kids or there's, there are a lot of kids too that are amazing when it comes to homework and stuff like that. But when it comes to a test, they, they bomb it. So, like, should the school system, should the way that we look at school be altered a little? Maybe. Maybe. It's not something that works for every single person. But I don't think we're ever, we will ever find a system that works amazingly, swimmingly for every single person. So, she talks about how her grandfather or before that, excuse me, he said he's always hated school, but he loves learning. So when he joined the service and he got to touch all these different places, he enjoyed that. And he like, he feels that that kind of made him more of the man that he is today. Her grandfather, Alex's grandfather was the national secretary for the nation of Islam. So she's met um, or her grandfather at least has met all these like very prominent people in the nation. Um, 
Her grandfather was not big on college, didn't think that she needed it. Her parents, on the other hand, was like, no, you got the grades, you go to college. She then talks about when it was time for her to go to college that there was no money for it. So I don't know, if did she go to college? I don't think she quite answered that or whatever, but she basically feels you do not have to go to college to be successful. And I agree. I, I a thousand percent agree. Now, I do have my degree. I did go to college, but I also have friends that are doing very, very well for themselves that didn't go to college, that are business owners, that are firefighters, that are police officers, that are construction workers, that are business owners, you know what I mean, that are doing very, very well for themselves that didn't go to college. I think everybody should try it. I do think everybody should give it a year, see if you like it, uh, to see if it works. That's just my personal belief. Um, but I, I don't, college is not for everybody, right? And I think that we know that there are certain jobs that you have to go to college for. Certain, certain jobs, you need that piece of paper. But there are also certain jobs that you don't. There are trades, social media and influencing is now huge. There are some companies where you can start off in the mailroom and work your way up. Didn't we just read about, like, was it the Nike CEO? How he started as, like, in the mailroom or, like, a very, very low job and worked his way up to being the CEO? Like, it's very possible. Very possible. So Tim starts talking about his older sister and how his oldest sister passed away from lupus. So he says she checked into the hospital one day and just never checked out. And he recalls this moment where him and his other, the middle sister, were sitting in his sister's hospital room, I guess after she had passed, and they were trying to get her class ring off. And he was like, he's so glad that he has that memory. And he wears both of his sister's ring, class rings, around his necklace and Alex is getting, you know, emotional and he's getting emotional and it's such a, a, a sweet moment that I hope this works out for them because he has been very open with her. He's been very vulnerable with her. He's really letting her in to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of his life. So I hope it, I really, really hope it works for them. He then tells her that, He's never told anybody this before, but he is happy that he gets the opportunity to give his parents another daughter. Oh, I said, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Ooh. Ooh, I said, my eyes are leaking. So he then says that it's not something that he takes lightly. And I, again, ugh, I hope it works out for them. We then get back to Taylor and Garrett. So she gives him a, a box of letters. I guess these are letters that his that her grandfather gave to her grandmother. Stuff like this always makes me cringe, right? Because this is something that is personal to you and your family. These notes were handed down from your grandfather to your father and then from your father down to you. And you go and give it to a stranger on the other side of the wall. You don't know if he is going to take one of the letters, if he is going to, like, copy down the words from the letters. I just, stuff like that is weird to me. Like, did you count how many letters were in the box before you gave it? I don't like that. I hate when they do stuff like that. And they give very personal things to these people. I don't like it at all. At all. Nonetheless, he does, she does that. And then she reads something. I think she, I don't know if it was the letter that her grandfather gave or a letter that she wrote. And then he proposes. I, the way she was talking, I thought Taylor was going to propose herself. <laughs> I thought for sure Taylor was going to get on one knee and propose, but he proposes. Of course, she says yes, and then now we get to finally see somebody meet. We pan over to Stephen and Monica. So, Monica said, so let's get right to it. <laughs> Did you vote in the last election and the one before, okay? And Stephen is like, yeah, I did. He said, look, let's, let's get to it. Stephen said, my father is a Republican, and he is one of those Republicans that is going to vote Republican no matter what 
because he's Republican. There are a lot of Republicans like that. There are a lot of Democrats like that. Okay. Nothing. Well, there is something wrong with that because you should be voting based on policy, not straight party, but sure. So Stephen himself identifies as a centrist, right? So he feels that he is down the middle. He then goes on to say, I'm going to be real with you. I voted for Trump because I did not like Hillary. Not I didn't like Hillary's policies. I didn't like Hillary. Okay. He then said that he despised how Trump handled his preg um Lord I'm gonna say pregnancy how Trump handled his presidency, so he then in turn voted Biden, the last election. He said that he put more thought and more passion into the second vote and admits that he was very uneducated in his first vote. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I will say if you are in the United States of America, the, re the voter registration deadline is coming up on, let me get the exact date. Get the exact date. Um, I think it's October 14th. October 16th. Make sure you guys are all voting. Make sure you guys are registered to vote. Do your research. Vote for the candidate that you honestly feel is going to protect your best interest. Okay? Make sure we do that. Rock the vote. So, Monica kind of raised an eyebrow when he said that he was uneducated in his first vote. Um, when he initially voted for Trump. I don't know what that raising of the eyebrow was. It made me raise the eyebrow, not because you voted for Trump, but because you admitted to being uneducated about it. It's, it's so important to do your research. But nonetheless, he then goes on to say that he identifies as white. I said, okay, so what are you? So he said that his grandmother has always said that his dad's side was Italian. So he was like, okay, bet. I'm, you know, got a little sauce to me, okay? He did an ancestry test and found out that he has a lot of West African in him um, from Nigeria mainly. He was like, so that means that my dad is like three-fifths black and all this other type of stuff. So he said because of that, he's like really interested in getting a bunch of Ghana books. Is it Ghana? Is that how you say it? Books about Ghana. I don't want to offend anybody. And a lot of Nigerian books because it has now opened up a whole world for him to like really dig deep and find out more about himself. I said, Stephen, look at your hair. You knew you had some African in you. <laughs> he, he's given Stephen from UK last season. So, okay. We all know what happened with Stephen from the UK last season. Let's just keep that in mind. So we then um, hear from Monica that she is mixed. So she describes herself as mixed race. Her mom is from Honduras, even though her parents are, are um, mixed race from over there. And her dad is black. Stephen called her a mutt. I'm sorry. I have never felt that calling somebody a mutt was appropriate. Absolutely not. I don't even like that Lotto was calling herself mulatto at first. You are not an animal. You are not a mutt. You are a biracial person if that's what you choose to identify as. Oh, my God. So he then said that he believes in marrying for selfish reasons. He said you should marry somebody that is going to make you a better person that is going to, in turn, make you want to make them a better person. Monica agrees. That's all that matters. We finally get to Tyler and Ashley A, our favorite couple, and they got some wings, and I guess that was chili. Is that what that was? Some wings and beans or something? But he prays over the food, and while he prays over the food, he's praying over their relationship, their union, and all that type of stuff. Very beautiful prayer. He says that he's always been kind of scared to pray out loud. And, you know, there's no wrong way to pray, which there is not. There's no wrong way to pray. The message is going to get up there, okay? 
But I, I feel him. Like, I don't like praying out loud either. So, like, if we're at family dinners or something like that, and they're like, okay, Tammy, lead the prayer, I'm always like, good God, what prayer do I have back in the memory bank that I can say? Because I feel like otherwise I'm going to stumble over my words. Now, when it's just me and, and, and the big man upstairs, we get it popping, okay? But if it's like an audience, I don't know, I freeze. So I feel him on that. But what he said, which was like so beautiful is he wants them to be able to pray together out loud. He wants to get to a point where like he is now where he's comfortable praying out loud for the both of them. And he wants to be able to do that together. And she she's all with it. Like she loved the fact that he prayed over the food and he blessed the food. They then have like a music listening party. I feel that the way to really get to know somebody is by the music that they listen to. I grew up in a musical household. My parents played music all the time. My parents play music all the time now. I constantly have music playing and I think your taste in music says a lot about yourself right? I am a, y'all, y'all know me. I am a nineties, nineties kid through and through eighties, baby, nineties kid, nineties. The, the music in the nineties to me is just the greatest decade of music ever. She said she likes a little nineties R and B. I said, Ashley, that's why we cool. Tyler enjoys I think he said he liked little 90s R&B too. So they're playing the song and she's like, oh my God, I love this song. He tells her that he really loves her and that she is safe and protected with him. Now, I don't know if she said I love you back. I don't remember, but he seems okay with it. He wanted to get that off his chest. He said it was unexpected. He didn't plan on saying that to her and I love that for them. Oh, I love can, one. Can we get one black love couple going? At least one. And then Garrett and Taylor are getting ready to meet. And now Garrett is like, I don't care what she looks like, but she's not white, but that's okay. And so Garrett is kind of flailing right now a little bit. So I hope that he's okay with Taylor when the door is finally open. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I got 32 minutes out. Okay. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.